If you listen to the tech news fear mongers like us, we've by now convinced you that <laughs> robots are going to steal all the jobs and the only ones left will be for geniuses with PhDs in machine learning. Our guest today suggests that the future is not that dismal and that designing AI might be as accessible as software coding has become today. Welcome Stephen Levy from Back Channel. Thank you. So you profiled a startup called Bonsai that hopes that AI is now in the assembly language era, which makes it easier for scientists to uh, create neural nets. Can you explain what this means? Yeah, so uh, it's not good for all of us that it's in the assembly level era. Uh, if you look at the history of computing, uh, when it first started, people had to write directly to the hardware. You really had to understand down to the digits how to program a computer. Uh, now we've moved to the assembly level era because places like, places like Google have come up with their toolkits like TensorFlow, which enable people who really know what they're doing to do things more efficiently. But the average programmer, the average software developer really can't develop a neural network on his or her own to uh, to train it and learn things like uh, how to understand language or things like that. Um, uh, and what this company Bonsai does is saying, okay, we're gonna take it to the next step, uh, the step where they did compilers so people can write in more uh, easy to write uh, code, higher level languages like C++ or Python or things like that, that kind of equivalent. So they have a scripting language called Inkling that people can use and you just write your program uh, you know, putting the concepts that you want to uh, have in the uh, whatever application you're writing. And in the background, this thing will build a neural network for you. So you could be uh, a machine learning power without having to take any training in how to use machine learning and, and build neural nets. So you sh uh, saw the demo at O'Reilly's Artificial Intelligence Conference and they showed off uh, Bonsai playing the game Breakout. Why, right. why do they always train AI to play <laughs> games? Why do they do that? Well, games it turns out to be a good testing ground, a good proxy for more serious problems there. So it's no accident that DeepMind uh, in trying to make some advances in general artificial intelligence, trying to build a system that uh, can understand not just one thing, but lots of things. Uh, you know, you train it on you know, one game and it can learn how to play another game. They use the Atari game set to do that. So they trained it to play one Atari game and it learned a whole bunch of others, including Breakout. Um, didn't master Pac-Man, that was too tough for it. But, uh, <laughs> but, the, but the deep mind thing was very impressive because it was an exercise in general general artificial intelligence. That's the thing that kind of scares people, that if you teach something uh, AI, you know, it, it learns how to do things and then learns more on its own. You know, and then just can, you know, the singularity kind of stuff happens after that. Uh, and that's what DeepMind is going in that direction. They don't want to create the singularity, but they want to have an artificial intelligence that you just set out in the world to start learning things. So uh, for instance, if you're doing a self-driving car, uh, you put it behind the wheel and it keeps learning. It can you know, watch people drive and learn on its own. And then maybe it could learn from there, you know, watching what people do on the side of the road, uh, how to go into this 7-Eleven you know, and go get a case of beer. So that, that, that'd be very handy. You wouldn't have to train it on that. But that's for things that PhDs do. What this bonsai company does is it takes the deep learning out of deep learning, you, you know, and, and does it for you. And it's a step where... It, what I call a democratization of AI. Bonsai is one of only a number of companies that are working on different schemes for different audiences to bring, give you the power of deep learning without having to take it at Stanford f for six years. So, okay, so you say, look, Ma, no PhDs. We're in that, we're headed right. towards that. Uh, if we don't need a PhD, what, what do we need? Well, for Bonsai, you need to be a good programmer uh, because you have to write the code that uh, the company will then uh, turn over to its neural nets and, and implement it there. And the neural nets will be optimized in the case of breakout for high score. If you're doing language, it'll be optimized to you know, interpret language correctly uh, and, and, and things like that. Uh, there's another company I mentioned in the article called Bottlenose, and they want to replace the data scientist. So they want to teach analysts, not programmers, how to get the benefits 
of uh, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, without having to learn how to, how to do that there. And there's one other company that's uh, uh, demonstrating at the AI conference, uh, it, uh, Javits the, uh, today, uh, saying how to get everyone on Earth to be able to train neural nets there. So you can't get any broader than that. Yeah, exactly. So. Um these are all startups that you uh, talk to or that you that you uh, write about in this article. Is there room for startups or is this really at this point Google and Apple and Microsoft's game like AI is there, or is there still room for startups? Well, what's happening is when a startup starts to get traction, one of those companies you mentioned usually buys it there. So uh, they, they, when a company start out, they don't say, yeah, our, our goal is to be bought up by Google or uh, Yahoo or Facebook or whoever, you know, uh, probably not Yahoo, but uh, it'll be, you know, if one of those companies does it well, uh, you can imagine a Google buying it. You know, Google open sourced its own tools, and I wouldn't be surprised if Google was interested in seeing uh, a system where people would use Google style of AI to bring AI to their programs, even if the programmers uh, didn't know how to do it. So Satya Nadella at Ignite today uh, had proclaimed that Microsoft is dedicated to, I mean, exactly what we're talking about here, uh, democratizing uh, AI. What's what's in it for Microsoft to, to do that compared to, let's say, a startup such as this that's, that's doing it as a service? What are the differences there? Well, they all want developers to write on their platforms there. So, uh, you know, Microsoft is a company. Remember, Steve Ballmer used to get up and say, developers, developers, developers. He'd scream it out loud. <laughs> they really haven't gone away from that. Uh, they, they want people to write to the Microsoft system. And if they can help people, you know, make their uh, programs or applications more intelligent, more powerful, um, then that's something good for Microsoft. All they need now is a phone that people can write apps for. <laughs> Very true. So, Stephen, you've been covering uh, technology for many decades, and um, is <laughs> boy, that's a big chunk. That, that, was, that was a compliment. I, I, I think you can still count those decades on your hands. Yes. <laughs> uh, so. Has has artificial? I mean, artificial intelligence has been around. We've been talking about it for probably as long as you've been writing. Um, what's changed now? What's different now than it was? You know, say 20, 30 years ago. It works. That's the big <laughs> difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, the you know, artificial intelligence was the biggest overpromise and underdeliver uh, in technology. You know, for many many years in the nineteen fifties, uh, when Marvin Minsky and John McCarthy and, and, and others. Uh, started it, they said, well, within a few years, we'll have things as, as a smart as a human being there. Uh, and we still can't imagine that almost uh, ha happening there. We have things now that are, uh, for certain tasks, much smarter than human beings, uh, not just in breakout, but in things like uh, just type, you know, being able to take a, a, a typed query and going over billions of pages and finding the answer to your query. People can't do that. Um, and with this breakthrough, specifically in neural nets and what's called deep learning, uh, as a combination of better algorithms to do it, more computing power, and especially a lot more data to feed into these models. Uh, finally, this stuff is you know becoming super effective in solving problems and doing things like driving cars. So uh, we've reached the point where the time is right for uh, artificial intelligence to do sufficient traction that people are terrified of it. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Stephen Levy has been writing about technology since 1981. He's at, at Stephen Levy on Twitter. He's currently the editor-in-chief at Back Channel. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, you Stephen. Too.